Good morning. Today we're going to be talking about oppositional defiant disorder. And before we begin talking, I'd encourage you to watch both this video, and actually you only need to watch the first couple of minutes. It's pretty much the same throughout and fairly disturbing. In this one, which is a minute and a half and will probably make you laugh and you'll probably watch it again and again and post it on Facebook. But for each of them, what I want you to think about is what kinds of symptoms are you seeing, what kinds of things are problems, and what, you know, eventually we're going to get to what would we do in order to solve this problem. So we're talking about oppositional defiant disorder. And uh, with the second child, you know, clearly he does not meet criteria for oppos oppositional defiant disorder at this point. However, one of the things that I want you to be thinking about is that we should be intervening early. Uh, the first child, you know, certainly it looks like at least four of the following you know, losing temper, touchy, easily annoyed, angry, resentful, arguing with, his, with authority figures, actively defies or refuses to comply with requests. It's unclear about the remaining ones. And as we're thinking about oppositional defiant disorder, what you want to be considering is that the disturbance is associated with distress in the individual or others in that person's in immediate co uh, context and affects social, educational, occupational, other important areas of functioning. And not exclusively during the course of a psychotic a disorder, substance use, depressive, bipolar disorder, not just disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. So these are our rule outs in C. These are some of the things that we should be considering. Is this what's happening? So how would we assess them? I use the home situations questionnaire, which you can find in your textbook. I also use uh, the child behavior checklist, but you can get a feeling for how one might do assessment in terms of structured assessments here in this part of the of the CARS ratings uh, sheet. So does your child present any problems with compliance to instructions, commands, rules for any of you or for you in any of these situations? And the home situations questionnaire is very similar. I just finished reading our kids. And for those of you who want more information, not just in terms of what happens um, at a local level, but also more nationally, consider this. Uh, Robert Put Putnam uses a lot of case studies, a lot of interviews of children and their parents. Um, he also pulls together a lot of the cognitive or the the research on how kids are doing and what kinds of changes there have been. And he concludes that a lot of this is a class issue, social class issue, with a lot of stress and on families. Also a lot of issues in terms of mentoring in terms of providing opportunities to support um, support kids. Very readable book. Um, the case study parts, I think, are a lot of fun. But, you know, I'd encourage you. So in terms of risk factors, things like family conflict and poor parenting and problems with peers and some information processing differences differences. So kids who are running into problems in school are more likely to run into to problems here. Also some also child abuse. Not surprising we've seen that throughout the semester and we will continue to see it. Now 
When we're talking about these issues in the last slide, in this slide, we primarily focused on environmental issues. And Guy et al.'s research, and I believe I've shown you this before, you know, looks at the role of biological issues and clearly uh, birth parents, psychiatric issues, psychiatric problems affect their their children's antisocial behaviors. But in addition, we want to be paying attention to this part here, that this is the part that we can control, that adoptive parents' um, strategies for disciplining affect their children's antisocial behaviors. So we can't control this part, you know, this nature part. We can control this. So how do we? We can do so in a variety of different ways. I think working with parents, working with their families can be really important strat or strategies. So talking to parents about how to respond to behavior problems how to clearly communicate rules and expectations, how to provide positive rather than negative attention. So the first video with Jaden looked like he was getting a lot of negative attention. And sometimes kids who are acting out get attention for bad things rather than for good things. And we'd rather have, you know, attention is attention. Um, Sometimes parents need to pick their battles and ignore minor and appropriate behaviors. They need to use appropriate discipline and be consistent. So one of the problems that many parents run into is that, you know, when they're tired, they, you know, say no, 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 or maybe they refuse to do anything at that point, and at other times they let things slide. We need to, to learn or to help parents learn effective ways of asking children to do things. Clear, short, and it should be clear what the consequences are. Token economies, probably many of you experienced or used token economies when you were children. Maybe when you were um, or in school, you got stickers when you did various sorts of things, good things. And token economies can be pretty effective. Parents need to learn how to solve problems effectively and prevent problems rather than letting them escalate. And they also need to find ways to work with the school. Um, sometimes when I'm talking to, to parents, Sometimes their kids uh, run into problems with the school and not at home. Sometimes at home and not at school. And, you know, sometimes the reason that they're not having problems at home is that the parents are allowing anything to happen. But sometimes it's that teachers or that particular teacher and child mix you know, isn't a good one and they don't know how to respond more effectively. So there are different kinds of outcomes of disruptive behavior disorders. So ADHD, oppositional defiant disorder, and conduct disorder. Problems are, you know, there are three paths. One um, is largely associated with symptoms of ADHD and also problems with family dysfunction, you know, related to negative outcomes, problems with, you know, a negative personality, difficult temperament, you know, from early childhood, also uh, problems that extend well beyond, you know, adolescence. And the third one is more normal, so many you know, many teens run into problems in their teenage years and don't run into problems later. Let me go back to Putnam's book, and one of the things that he recommends is mentoring. 
you know, find ways to support the kids around you. So what should you do now? Think about why children tantrum in grocery lines and any of you who are have ever worked in a grocery store know that that is a real difficult place for children, for their parents, and certainly for the people working there. Consider what you would do to decrease a child's tantrum. 